Boys and girls, uh, Homebrew62 here with the uh, results of my Simcoe Smash uh, experiment. Now, uh, Smash, a uh, Smash beer is um, it's an acronym for the the words uh, single malt and single hop. S M A S H. And uh, and these are usually experimental beers. These are beers that are made very simply, and uh, just with uh, just one malt and one hop. In in this case, the malt was um, it was um, pale ale malt, and uh, I've used pale ale malts before, usually in darker beers, uh, lighter beers. Um, uh, normally, I've used two pale two row, which I know that the two are very similar. But I've heard that the pale ale malt's a little bit sweeter, so I thought I'd you know kind of split the difference, see what it was. Of course, the hops by the name, uh, the hop is um, Simcoe, and I've used Simcoe before as well, but in conjunction as usual, you know, with with other hops. So so normally the malts are used with other malts, so we don't really know what the you know what the the single you know what does that pale ale malt taste like? You know what is that? What does that Munich malt taste like? What is that? What is that pale, uh, you know, two row? What is the Pilsner malt? So, so that's what we do. We kind of break it out in these experiments, and um, and I had some concerns because it's a little bit of work, and uh, you know, you work for several hours. <laughs> it's a little bit of money, um, and you make it five gallons. You know, usually I do, and I know I could have made it less, but I usually make five gallons. Say the heck with it. But uh, in this case, I did, and. Um, so my con my concerns going into this was well there were two main. First of all, what's it going to taste like? Because I thought well used using one malt and I'm used to using you know crystal malts and maybe some some other darker malts with uh, with my beer and I'm thinking is it going to you know is this going to be bland? And um, so so that was a concern. Second concern was it's a little bigger. Uh, a little more complicated, but it was. Um, I'm really into making sure that the my beers have, you know, good head retention. Uh, you know, of course, good carbonation, good head, re head retention, and I know that there there are two components actual to 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 head retention. First component is carbonation. You have to have carbonation in order to you know ha have any kind of head there. Um, the second one is. Um, uh, the the mouthfeel of the beer, the heaviness, the uh, for lack of a better word, the viscosity of the beer. Those are the two things. Now you can have, I guess you can ha you can have carbonation without head retention. And some of you might do that. I've done it before where I've had lots of carbonation. Thing is really fizzy, but there's no head retention. Problem is, is there's no viscosity. And those two work in tandem with with each other. So the, in the way, and I'm trying to reflect in my concerns here. The way that you get viscosity a lot of times is using an adjunct, like uh, say uh, uh, flaked wheat, flaked barley, um, you know, flaked corn or maize called maize, uh, crystal malts, um, all you know, the whole gamut of crystal malts, uh, caracals, carafoam, things like that, and uh, I use those things. You know, on my beers to to enhance that that head retention to get that going, but this one doesn't have it because it only has one you know one malt. So, um, also you know another another one um, uh, is also maltodextrin, and I think the Cooper's Brew Enhancers have those in it, especially the the Brew Enhancer one. I think is uh, I don't use them, so I don't know a whole lot about them, but I hear that they have um, they have um, maltodextrins in them that, that increase that viscosity, that the heaviness of the beer. So you need that in order to have the the the, 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 the head retained. In, in other words, you can have a lot of you can have a lot of carbonation, like in a, in a bottle of seltzer water. You pour a bottle of seltzer water into a glass, and you have a head for about a half a second. It goes away. Okay, so because it has no viscosity, that's plenty of uh, you know plenty of. Uh, uh, of carbonation, but no, uh, but no viscosity to, to to retain that head. So that was a really concern of mine. Uh, and and then I recently read, and, and you guys probably know this more than I do because I give everybody you know 50 IQ points above me anyway most of the time. But um, the the I, I learned that you can actually increase your head retention with high alpha hops. I guess it's the 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 components, the oils, the chains in there. Um, 
actually help head retention. So that's why I chose Simcoe hops um, above any of the other because it's a high alpha hop. Now, of course, um, you know, push about and more down below and, uh, and I'll have the recipe for this. Um, and, it, and it did turn out okay, but, um, or I wouldn't post a recipe, but it's down below if you, if you want it. Um, so anyway, uh, I want to go ahead and, uh, so, so I chose high alpha hops for that and hoping that that would help me. So that was the only component I was, you know, that and the, and the taste, and that was the only component, other component I could control, so I did use high alpha hops. Okay, so um, let me get this into a glass. This has been sitting out for a while. It's cool, but not, it's not freezing cold. I used, uh, I used four, uh, I used four ounces of priming sugar for that, for this. I think that's 120 grams if I'm if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong about that if if so I'll edit it out but uh, but anyway so uh, but I used you know uh, it's of course bottle conditioned and I used uh, four ounces of table sugar just that's usually what I use and uh, for carbonation but the head retention fingers crossed okay here goes so anyway so I got the carbonation in there it's got a it's got a hiss I know it's I know it's going to hiss I'm used to that but uh, but the but the test is actually in the pouring so. Here it goes. Give it a fairly aggressive, and eh, a medium, not too much. I want too too much foam. So there it is, right there. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I used a Whirlflock tablet. That dude is that dude is really clear. I don't know if you can see me through it. But that's about the clearest beer I've ever made. I was really happy about that. I poured that and I said, yeah, that's good. About a, maybe a finger head, maybe a little less. Um, and you know, it almost looks like a lager, you know? But uh, it's got a low, I think the SRM is around, I think it's around five. It's not very, but it's a beautiful beer. Um, but then, you know, you can smell it, and you can smell that the pale malt is, is sweeter. You can smell it. It's very sweet. You can smell the sweetness in there. There's a little bit of hop. You can tell there's a little bit of hop, uh, maybe citrusy smell, maybe a little grapefruit. Head's uh, hanging in there a little bit. It's kind of dissipating a little. But that is a, that is a beer made with pale ale malt, Simcoe hops, period. You know, yeast and water. That, that's it. Let me get a taste on it. It's got a medium mouth feel to it. I like the carbonation not too much. A little bit there. A little on the tongue. It's got a... Uh, it's got, it, it is sweet. It's kind of surprising that, that pale ale malt's pretty sweet. You know, it retains that sweetness. It's not it's not dry on the finish or anything. It's pretty much you know level. A little grapefruit from the hops, from the Simcoe hops, and there's a little bit of lemon in. There's like a lemony kind of in, way in the background. Just a little bit of of a lemony taste, which is really kind of refreshing. This would make a great <clears throat> this would make a great summer beer actually. But uh, look at that. It's pretty clear. Very, very pale, pretty clear. It's uh, considered a, a pale ale. Let me take another taste here. Yeah, that mouth feels good. Look at that lacing, a little bit of lacing there. That's nice. But anyway, so it's good. It's very refreshing, it's light. I'm kind of going for that this year, new year, keep things light. I'm going to get away from, start slowly getting away from the high alpha hops um, and get into the, the, you know, the lighter, the, the easier going, kind of easier on the palate beers for a while. Maybe in the, maybe I'll turn a corner in the summer or something and start doing double IPAs, I don't know, but, but that, that turned out really nice. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Um. But I would, uh, I would encourage any of you, especially in the summertime, to, uh, to brew that one up. Man, that's a good lawnmower beer. About four, I think it's ended up being about 4.5 ABV. Um, but, uh, 
really good. So there it is. Uh, don't want to belabor the point too long, but there's my uh, Simcoe Smash. Complete success. Very refreshing. Nice summer beer. Remember that. You may want to jot it down just for summertime. And uh, keep on brewing. And uh, here's cheers to you and Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks for watching.